Today we present 12 signs of fake nice people that Stoicism warns us about. The great Stoic Marcus Aurelius said that a good, benevolent, and sincere person can also be recognized by their eyes. Nevertheless, trying to tell who's really nice from who's faking it can be tough, just like spotting the difference between real art and a good fake. Some people are great at hiding what they really feel, but even the best fakers show some hints that they're not genuine. It's good to know these hints. Watch out for signs of fake niceness so you can spot the act when you meet someone like this. Sign number one, they show great enthusiasm when meeting you. Beware of those who seem unnaturally excited to see you. It's an unmistakable energy. You'll sense it when it's just a performance. Have you ever bumped into someone you haven't seen in forever and suddenly you're both acting like long lost best friends? Beyond the typical, how have you been? I've missed you. Exchanges, do the conversations quickly escalate to we must absolutely catch up for drinks soon. Deep down, both of you know that meetup probably won't happen. Yet their eagerness to suggest it can leave you feeling guilty for not making future plans, even when they know it's an empty promise. It's a strategic move, leaving you feeling obligated while they score points for seeming considerate. These encounters often involve exaggerated gestures, over-the-top expressions of affection, and a relentless push for future engagements that rarely materialize. They excel at creating the illusion of genuine connection, masking their underlying motives behind a facade of enthusiasm. But don't be fooled. Their eagerness is more about gaining social capital than fostering meaningful relationships. Stay vigilant against such manipulative tactics and prioritize authentic connections built on sincerity and mutual respect. Sign number two, they crave the spotlight for self-validation. Meet the individuals who thrive on attention and approval. Their incessant need for acknowledgement often stems from a deep-seated desire to have their constructed image admired and validated by those around them. Authentic souls simply present themselves as they are, but these pretenders hinge their self-worth on your endorsement of the character they've crafted. They meticulously curate every aspect of their persona, from the clothes they wear to the stories they tell, all in pursuit of admiration and validation. Ignore them and you disrupt the narrative they've painstakingly built, sending their carefully curated world into a tailspin. Their fear of rejection is palpable, driving them to seek constant reassurance and validation from others. They don't just want the spotlight, they believe they need it to confirm their own worth. Behind their charming facade lies a fragile ego, vulnerable to even the slightest hint of disapproval. Their interactions are often characterized by exaggerated emotions, grandiose gestures, and a relentless need to be the center of attention. They excel at manipulating social dynamics to ensure that all eyes are on them, feeding off the validation they receive like a drug. But beneath the surface lies an emptiness, a void that can never be filled by external validation alone. Sign number three, they're passive aggressive. Encounter the intricate artistry of the passive aggressive persona, where insults masquerade as compliments leaving a lingering sting beneath the surface. These individuals are virtuosos in the subtle art of snide remarks, crafting questions or comments with meticulous precision to position themselves for a covert jab. They may feign curiosity about your attire, offer commentary on your physical appearance, or subtly reference shifts in your behavior, all while laying the groundwork with what appears to be genuine interest. However, don't anticipate genuine praise to follow suit. Instead, they'll present remarks dripping with insincerity, calculated to subtly undermine your confidence. These covert exchanges have a knack for quietly corroding self-esteem, often before you even discern the intricate game they're orchestrating. Beyond merely verbal exchanges, passive-aggressive individuals often employ nonverbal cues and behaviors to convey their underlying hostility. From subtle eye rolls and dismissive gestures to conveniently forgetting important details or obligations, their passive-aggressive arsenal extends far beyond words alone. This multifaceted approach makes them adept at leaving their targets feeling confused, invalidated, and unsure of how to respond. Furthermore, passive-aggressive behavior can manifest in various social and professional settings, from the workplace to personal relationships, making it a pervasive and often challenging dynamic to navigate. Thus, Recognizing the signs and developing strategies to address passive-aggressive behavior is essential for maintaining healthy 
communication and preserving one's well-being in various social contexts. Sign number four, they often pretend to be listening. Navigate the realm of the inattentive, where questions are asked not out of interest, but as a mere formality. These individuals perfect the art of seeming engaged while their attention is miles away, perhaps lost in the glow of their phone screens, the allure of a status update, or a side conversation, even as they sit right before you. Their responses, often misplaced or off cue, revealing their lack of genuine engagement. They swiftly change the subject or pose a new question, leaving your shared words forgotten. You'll find that your words don't stick with them, vanishing into the ether as if they were never spoken at all. In this realm of disengagement, conversations become mere transactions, devoid of depth or significance. It's as though you're speaking into a void, where your words echo briefly before dissipating into silence. Despite your efforts to connect, you're met with indifference, a subtle reminder of the ever-present distractions that fragment attention and dilute meaningful interaction. It's a frustrating dance, attempting to navigate through the superficial exchanges, longing for a genuine connection that seems increasingly elusive. Yet, amidst the sea of inattentiveness, there's an opportunity for introspection, a chance to reassess the value of presence and authentic engagement in a world overrun by distractions. Perhaps by acknowledging the prevalence of this phenomenon, we can strive to reclaim the lost art of attentive listening and meaningful dialogue, forging connections that endure beyond fleeting moments of interaction. Sign number five, they always talk about the misfortunes of others. Discern the authenticity of someone by observing how they speak of others' misfortunes. Those cloaked in faux niceness are often found reveling in the adversities of their peers, masquerading their glee with a veil of fake concern. Initially, their feigned empathy might paint them in a benevolent light, seemingly sensitive and kind-hearted. Yet, a pattern soon emerges, revealing a more unsettling pleasure they derive from the woes of others. This habitual focus on the negative, under the guise of sympathy, not only betrays a lack of sincerity, but also hints at a likelihood that they're similarly exploiting your stories when you're not around. Their apparent compassion is but a smokescreen, obscuring a penchant for indulging in others' miseries. In private conversations, their words drip with a subtle disdain for those they once pretended to empathize with. They dissect others' misfortunes with a disturbing enthusiasm, relishing the details of their struggles as if it were a feast for their ego. Their supposed concern morphs into a twisted form of entertainment, feeding their insatiable appetite for gossip and schadenfreude. Yet amidst the disappointment and betrayal, there lies a valuable lesson. Through the deceit of these false allies, one learns to discern the authenticity of others not by their words alone, but by the sincerity of their actions and the empathy that permeates their character. For true compassion leaves no room for the exploitation of others' miseries, but instead seeks to alleviate their pain and uplift them in times of need. Sign number six, they like to show off. True kindness doesn't call for fanfare or broadcast its presence. It exists quietly, self-assured without seeking external validation. However, the counterfeit kind parades its benevolence, craving the spotlight. This performative altruism isn't about helping others, but about crafting an image. Watch as they ostentatiously support charitable causes or undertake grand gestures, not for the joy of giving, but for the accolades that follow. They might present you with a lavish birthday cake, overlooking your tastes or dietary restrictions, all to bask in the admiration for their effort rather than to genuinely please you. Their acts of kindness are strategically displayed, designed to enhance their own image rather than to truly benefit others. In their world, Generosity is not about the act itself, but about the applause that comes with it. They meticulously curate their social media feeds with photos of their volunteer work, charity events, and random acts of kindness, all carefully chosen for maximum impact. Each post is accompanied by a string of hashtags and self-congratulatory captions, turning genuine gestures into calculated moves on the grand stage of online approval. Yet, behind the facade of benevolence, lies a hollow core. Their relationships are transactional, built on the expectation of reciprocity rather than genuine connection. They shower friends and acquaintances with gifts and favors, not out of love or compassion, 
but as investments in their own image. They keep mental tallies of every good deed, ready to cash in their chips at the first sign of disagreement or conflict. Sign number seven, they often exaggerate and lie. Encounter the realm where tales are spun with flair and fiction blends with reality. The hallmark of inauthenticity is the repetition of self-aggrandizing stories, so frequently retold that their fabricator loses track of the iterations. Over time, the narrative phrase, revealing inconsistencies and outright fabrications, each rendition more embellished than the last. These tales, ostensibly woven from threads of triumph, often unravel upon closer scrutiny, exposing a tapestry of exaggeration or complete falsehood. The pursuit of validation turns into a spectacle of deception, where the line between fact and fabrication blurs in their quest for admiration. As the web of deceit unravels, those ensnared in its threads find themselves caught in a precarious position. Each embellished story, once a source of pride and validation, now becomes a tangled knot of half-truths and outright lies. Yet, in their desperation to maintain the illusion, they grasp at straws, weaving even more elaborate fictions to cover their tracks. But truth has a way of asserting itself, like sunlight piercing through a dense fog. Those who have been deceived begin to question the validity of every tale spun by the fabricator, searching for kernels of truth amidst the tangled mass of falsehoods. And with each revelation, the fabricator's credibility dwindles, their once imposing facade crumbling under the weight of their own deception. Sign number eight, they're trying to interrupt you. Spotting this trait is straightforward. When someone consistently cuts you off mid-conversation, it's clear they place little value on your words or your company. They might be speaking in your direction, but they're not truly engaging with you. This persistent interruption is a glaring indicator of insincerity betraying their outwardly pleasant facade. Genuine interaction is a two-way street, but in this case, it's a one-sided monologue disguised as dialogue. Sign number nine, they're trying to belittle you. Discern the facade of faux niceness through their conversational tactics. They skillfully steer dialogues back to themselves. Their inquiry into your weekend merely sets the stage for the grand reveal of their own fabulous time. A question about your vacation plans, simply a prelude to the tales of their lavish getaway. Even a chat about your life becomes an opportunity for them to subtly undermine you. It's a calculated strategy, veiled under the guise of interest, where the underlying aim is to diminish your experiences while elevating their own. This pattern is their signature, where self-promotion is masked as engagement, but the real intent is to subtly outshine you. Their conversational maneuvers are like a carefully choreographed dance, with every step designed to ensure they remain the focal point. They deftly interact with anecdotes and achievements, skillfully redirecting attention away from you and back onto themselves. It's as if they're performing on a stage, with you cast as a mere audience member in their one-person show. But beneath the surface of their polished facade lies a deep-seated insecurity, driving their relentless need for validation. They measure their worth not by their own intrinsic value, but by how they stack up against others. And so, every conversation becomes a battleground, a chance to assert their superiority and affirm their place in the spotlight. Sign number 10, they pretend to try to please everyone. Immerse yourself in the world of those who perform the impossible act of pleasing everyone. These individuals are entangled in a perpetual performance, attempting to juggle commitments beyond their grasp. Their mantra is yes, not from a place of genuine ability or desire, but driven by a fear of rejection and an inflated sense of capability. This incessant agreeableness is their shield, warding off the possibility of displeasing anyone. Yet, inevitably, this leads to a cascade of unmet expectations and unfulfilled promises, leaving a trail of disappointment in their wake. Their attempt to be all things to all people is a precarious balancing act that ultimately leaves everyone, including themselves, out in the cold. Sign number 11, they respect power. Step into the realm where respect is not a universal gift, but a strategic investment. The authentic individual extends kindness universally, recognizing the intrinsic value in each person. In contrast, the opportunist's civility is selectively dispensed, tailored to the currency of influence and advantage. 
Their warmth and respect are contingent on your status, your utility in their ascent up the career ladder, or your gatekeeping role in exclusive social circles. This conditional nicety is a tactical play, a means to an end, where your worth in their eyes is directly linked to the doors you can open for them. Once their objectives are achieved, their feigned affections and respect often dissipate, revealing a transactional nature devoid of genuine connection. They don't treasure you for who you are, but for the benefits you bestow. Their respect is but a fragile veneer, easily cracked under the weight of their opportunistic ambitions. Like a chameleon changing colors to blend into its surroundings, they adapt their behavior to suit the situation, shifting loyalties as swiftly as the wind changes direction. And though the opportunists may rise to fleeting heights of success, their journey is ultimately a lonely one, devoid of true companionship or meaningful connection. For in their relentless pursuit of power, they sacrifice the very thing that gives life its richness and depth, authentic human connection. Sign number 12, they're too busy to help. Introducing the ultimate vanishing act, performed by those who master the art of conditional availability. These individuals are ever present when it benefits them, thriving in the glow of your generosity. Yet, the moment the tables turn and you seek their support, they're conspicuously absent. In times of real need, be it emotional solace post-heartbreak or hands-on help during a move, they're nowhere to be found. This breed of fair-weather friends demonstrates a stark unwillingness to spare even a moment for others, unless there's something in it for them. With them, the promise of help is but an illusion, dissolving exactly when you need it most. Stay alert to the presence of such individuals and actively create space for more authentic and heartfelt connections in your life. We're eager to hear your insights. Has this video opened your eyes to the possibility of a counterfeit individual in your circle? What was the telltale sign? Are there any indicators of insincerity we might have overlooked? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments section below. If you found value in our content, show your support with a like and spread the word by sharing this video with your network. To dive deeper into topics like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out. Explore our channel for more enlightening videos. Thank you for attention.